ahead and start recording now. Hey, everybody, I'm joined here today with um, James from the Freedom from Atheism Foundation, a Facebook group I was pleased to run into the last month or so. Uh, see that they are up to about three quarters of a million likes or followers and growing. How are you doing today, James? Oh, I'm just doing great. Couldn't be better. Now, James, I understand that Freedom from Atheism Foundation is, uh, I see you have a Twitter, F-F-A-I-N-T-L, but you, uh, I understand you're mostly a Facebook group. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, I myself mostly do the Facebook. Uh, we do have other admins who, you know, some of them help with the Twitter. Also, we have a, a web page as well, but it's really just a group of us on Facebook who are, who are doing it. We're doing awfully well, although I noticed that there are some atheist groups that are significantly bigger, um, which, which seems to be – atheism seems extremely popular these days and very much of a pop culture phenomenon. At least that's my observation of what it's become. I'm curious, how did the Freedom from Atheism Foundation effort start, and, and, and how long has it been around, and what do you think the future is for it? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, I mean, you think atheism is a big pop culture. I mean, there's actually not a lot of atheist pages that are bigger than ours. I mean, you have like Richard Dawkins. I think there's a couple other ones. Um, but I mean, if you compare the biggest atheist pages, which are like you know a couple million, to say the biggest Christianity pages, which are looking at 20 million or so, I don't think there's e even a comparison um, there. In terms of you know what we're doing, I think we we started on uh, a few years ago. Um, you know, it was actually a group, a couple of pages that merged together, some uh, groups that were sharing some ideas. Um, I think you know, they, they merged together, and uh, and I was, you know, one of the one of the people that was involved right from the beginning. Uh, where we're going, I mean, there seems to be a lot of interest in our page. I think there's a lot of uh, people who want to join it, and uh, you know, it's it's a great place for uh, people who are the victims of atheism. To um, to share their views, and uh, I see it to, will be, you know, very popular um, as long as there's atheists, you know, uh, picking on people. Ah, oh, fair enough, fair enough. I was going to say some of the larger atheist groups are out there. Um, I, I've seen them with 500,000. I've seen one or two with over a million. Sometimes they go by sneaky names, though. You know, a lot of them go by the name Science, even though there's no real link between atheism and science whatsoever. Um, but a lot of them, like there's one, I'll go ahead and swear because they swear. They're called I Fucking Love Science, and they're hugely popular, and they're also an atheist, anti-Christian group. Um, so are a number of the others. But um, because they're calling it science, and it's it's clearly not science. It's just peddling atheism. I want to backtrack to something you've said there. I had a, an interview with Brett Keane about this, and I've talked to a few other people about this. Atheist bullying. I've been bullied on the internet by atheists um, in a big way. Um, I've known others even driven offline um, completely and into hiding because people were calling their homes, people were calling their, their, their employers. That, that's happened to people I've talked to. I'm curious, what are the experiences that, that – I mean, for example, I've noticed most – all of your admins, including you, are more or less anonymous, not like – hiding out in a bunker super secret, but what have your experiences been as a group and what have you seen with people being harassed by atheists? I'm, I'm curious what you've seen there because I've got my own stories. Yeah, I mean, well, our page, I mean, you know, we get it quite a bit. Um, you know, obviously you get a lot of the trolls and that. So it seems to be an active effort to, by a lot of these atheists to, to figure out who our admins are and hunt them down and, you know, publicly shame them and harass them at, you know, a few of them have been harassed at, like, as you said, at home. They've been harassed at their, you know, phone calls at their work, uh, places like that. Um, it is kind of annoying, I, I, to be honest. Um, and like I said, this, the, the whole the whole reason why um, you know, our page exists is because there's a lot of you know people who who you know experienced uh, atheist bullying. Um, you know Richard Dawkins, who's called for his followers to publicly mock and ridicule people of faith or, or rather different faiths than atheism. Um, you know, so so there is this tendency. So I think a lot of people come to our page really just hoping to get away from it all. Um, and you know, be able to share their experiences where 
without without fear of harassment. So we try to keep that as much as possible. And, and our admins are no different. A lot of them are on here because they've been harassed so much. So it's that's it, where. it's rather interesting. Now, um, obviously, whenever you do something critical of atheism. Um, as a movement, as an ideology, of course, you get the same recycled arguments like the claim that it's not an ideology and it's not a movement, um, which clearly aren't true. It clearly is an ideology. It clearly is a movement. They will even try to convert you back if you know that you're leave, left atheism. Um, I, one of the things I'm consistently finding is that people are afraid to actually come out and say – they believe in God. They may not even be religious, but they believe in God, and they can't stand the atheist thing. What we do on the Escaping Atheism Project is similar to what you guys do. We just we note what goes on in atheism and as an organized movement, as what we think of as a cult movement, and we get silently cheered. A lot of people don't want to take a public stand supporting us and saying, yeah. And I find the psychology of that interesting. I've only seen that in certain political movements and with atheism. I mean, have you ever experienced something like that outside of dealing with atheism? You know, and I'll be honest, I, I haven't. I mean, that is, it is a really interesting phenomenon. I suppose there, I mean, there are some extreme political groups that, that might do that. Um, I can't really think of any on the top of my head, but, you know, I've seen this, we have a very small fringe group and they really want to, ele you know, elevate their voices, elevate their numbers, you know, and, and kind of dominate the, the conversations. And I think a big part of what they do is really just trying to, to shout everybody else down, silence any views that differ from their own. Um, it's really kind of a form of identity politics, if you really want to think about it. They have a, a they really try to identify with themselves and, you know, have this, this superiority complex in, in many ways. And I'm not saying all atheists do that. And just to comment on something you said earlier, you said, you know, atheism is an ideology or a religion. Um, you know, I always be careful of using that phrase. And primarily because I don't think of, you know, atheism is a religion in the same way that theism is a, re or is a religion. You can't really say your, your religion is theism, but you can be of a religion that, you know, is theistic. Um, in the same way there are atheist religions or atheist ideologies, um, so you just got to identify which one. Marxism, for example, is an atheist ideology. You know, um, you know, you know, you know, various and there's various types of atheist religions as well. You know, so you know, if you can think of a temple of humanity. Ayn Rand's, throw, Ayn, yes. Ayn Rand's objectivism is clearly an sure, atheist. Sure, sure, You know, you'd yeah. call it a religion if it didn't have a god, but it has Ayn Rand and uh, and all that. Yep. Yeah, well, but one of the things I, I have noticed, and if you if you look at the atheist gatherings where atheists gather to agree that they have nothing whatsoever in common um they gather and you'll see you'll see libertarians and socialists talking to each other about how open-minded they are because they have other friends uh you know who are socialist versus libertarian it's like yeah but you're all atheists so you're bonding over that that supposed thing you have nothing that that, that you have nothing in common for it's See, when you say is atheism an ideology, I think you, you're, you're clearer. I think what our position would be in, is very arguable is that it's, it's a collection of ideology, but it is an ideological position. It's an ideological position to take against around which you can build other things. Um, the problem being, of course, you can go in multiple directions. So you could turn into a wild anarchist or a wild Marxist or a wild whatever, but the atheism will still kind of be at the core um, and I think it's because once you're atheist, you're thinking you can you can perfect humanity, and so you're just coming up with some sort of plan by which you can uh, perfect humanity. And then you have theistic worldviews, and they just sort of all assume that there are values outside of individual opinion. Um, whereas the atheistic philosophy or the atheistic view will not admit to truth or objectivity outside of human. Uh, outside of the individual's impressions, do you know what I mean there? Yeah, no, no, I'm not, not disagreeing with you at all. I think that's a very good point. Um, yeah, I mean they, they are unified. I think in their atheism, I mean, you know, and, and it is, a, you know, although I don't think of atheism itself as a religion, it really is a religious point of view or a faith position. I mean, 
you know they have this belief that you know their their view is the only right view that that their you know their uh, universe must exist without God. You know there there are certainly you know it comments on the the origin, nature, or purpose of the universe by making some of these claims. So it certainly is a, is a religious or ideological point of view, and you know how it manifests itself into like a greater philosophy or religion or you know ideology. And there are like I said organized groups with you know that actually do form. You know, so absolutely, yeah, I agree with you. Um, the, the, the interesting question is, I do see when I go through your group, there are atheists in there who are very defensive. And, and one of the things that I will see, and I spot this pattern elsewhere, is they will spend an inordinate amount of time arguing, sometime for hours, that they don't believe anything in particular, that atheism is not a belief, and will then ironically spend hours defending it. Um, which leads to the interesting question, why are you defending something you don't think is that important and says nothing about you? Well, I think that's, that's, that's pretty <laughs> I, obvious because yeah, it's, it's not really the case then, is it? They, they really, it's not that they don't believe in something. They, I, I think when I hear a lot of atheists say, well, you know, my atheism is just a lack of belief or, or, you know, I don't believe in anything or it's not a faith at all or, you know, or, or whatever, yada, 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 and just go on a thousand different ways of saying anything. It's really just atheism is simply, a, you know, a, a, an acceptance of an unproven claim, you know, of a non you know, whatever, you know, the way they, 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 they phrase these things. Um, the bottom line is, is they absolutely do believe in something. And they absolutely do, you know, however you want to look at it. Um, they do believe that, you know, in a universe that was created without God. And it, it's very important for them that God does not exist. I, I think, you know, part of, you know, their, their, uh, their intensity is, is they're really trying to convince themselves that there is no God. I think it is, a, you know, it's natural from a human point of view, um, you know, to believe in God. I mean, you know, there's been study after study after study showing that, you know, humans are intrinsically, you know, religious by nature. They intrinsically, you know, believe in a creator. These are like natural ways your your mind and works. A creator at uh, least something spiritual that works outside yeah, there, there, of, that, outside yeah. of the, the laws of yeah. physics, right? Yeah, purpose. Yeah, you believe there's something, you know, there's a purpose to things. Is you know, it's just the, it's just the way our, our mind works. Um, you know, as humans, it's, it's a very hard to overcome that, um, you know, that mentality. I think a lot of times, that, you know, for atheists, it's not that they don't believe in something. They don't want to believe in something. They really have to, you know, and I often ask them, say, are, are you trying to convince me or are you trying to convince yourself that, you know, that you don't believe in something? Because, you know, you're arguing with such an intensity that I'm pretty sure you do believe in something. You're just trying to trying to overcome come this natural, you know, natural tendency to, you know, to, to, to believe as a creator. So I think that's a big part of it. I think that one of the things that I sensed, and I sensed this for a long time, and it was growing in me for a, a, a few years. So I, I am a former atheist, and I had abandoned atheism right around 2007, right around when the new atheism stuff was getting crazy, right around 2006, 2007. But I was a pretty serious atheist for the longest time. Um... But and then I stopped being an atheist and I was pretty atheist friendly for the longest time. Right. But then what I started noticing is that more and more and more and more and more, especially in the current culture, I was afraid to mention my religious point of view. And I would see common atheists, especially coming out of the new atheists, you know, since the new atheist thing 10 years ago, common atheist talking points being asserted and nobody even contradicting them, you know, talking about science, talking about evolution obsessing on evolution actually obsessing on pseudoscience and one of the things i kept finding was quite a bit of what they were saying wasn't science at all they were just these dogmatic declarations and no i don't mean darwin's theory of evolution i don't even want to talk about that when i became christian it was very clear to me i didn't need to stop believing in evolution and i still never did um, it's just I get tired of being lectured about evolution like I'm a child who doesn't understand it because I read the Bible. Do you see that kind of science challenge coming up all the time where every atheist seems to think he's a science expert? Oh, I, I, I come into that all the time. And, and just, to, just so you know that, you know, I've actually got a Ph.D. in molecular biology. You know, I've, you know, trained as a, as a molecular biologist. I have you know, worked in the field for years, and, you know, um, so, so you know, I, I actually, um, same as you, I guess, very similar in, in that respect. I mean, I was a um, an atheist 
um, I see through my college years, it was actually during grad school that I actually uh, came, you know, came to reject atheism myself. And, you know, in the same way, um, now this was in the mid-90s, so it wasn't, you know, atheism wasn't as militant as it was back then. It was just another philosophical view. You do get some, you know, I mean, even Dawkins back then was, was a more subdued kind of guy, um, you know, read his books like... Um, a selfish gene, extended phenotype, but you know, it was more of this intellectual level. It wasn't very militant. It was really, I'd say, probably, you're right, probably about 10 years later, probably around 2006, 2007, that you really started seeing this militant uh, form of atheism, at least in the West, um, in America. And um, what I, you know, it was the same thing. And I was kind of relatively quiet. I, mean, I was, you know, spoke about my faith and that. And you know, some people, you know, were kind of questioning, oh, wait, why are you doing that? Doesn't seem right. But it was really about, you know, this, you know, I'd say about 10 years ago that you really started seeing a lot of this. You know, then I bring up on, you know, a lot of my atheist friends, or they, and then they would really start, you know, getting upset about it and really, you know, you know, attacking me, questioning me, and you know, bringing up things like evolution and that. And it was it was funny because you know some of my friends who are atheists. I mean, they have no background in science whatsoever. I'm a PhD in this subject. I'm no way, I know evolution pretty good. Let's just put it that way as a mm-hmm. as a biologist. Um, and they were trying to lecture me on this, and I just thought it was, it was very comical in a way. You know, like you know, it, you, know you don't even understand the topic. And you know, I said, well, kind of explain it to me. They go and they, you know, forward me you know links to articles by Richard Dawkins or <laughs> you know people people like this, and I'm like, okay, yes, but. You know, you got to take it in the context. You don't really understand what he's trying to say here. You know, or they'd send me an article. You know, whoever, whatever article they could find on science or evolution, and, and it's like, yes, you know, of course I believe in evolution, and, and, and that would actually frustrate them more, believe it or not. The very fact that I understood evolution, that I accepted it, and saw no problems between evolution and Christian faith. I mean, that, that, that you know, for them, I think it was it was very, very important that Christianity be in conflict with atheism as a way of justifying, or sorry, Christianity be in conflict with evolution as a way for them to justify their atheism. The fact that, you know, like they that had I to have that, Christianity as an enemy. Exactly. If, if, yeah, yeah. If, if, if Christianity wasn't at odds with science, then like their whole world view falls down. It's like, you know, they don't have any evidence to support their, their atheist views. So, but what they can say is, well, because, you know, Christianity was in conflict with evolution, Therefore, Christianity fails, and therefore atheism must be right. Having having me in a view that was, you know, that saw the two as being compatible was a real, real threat to them, and uh, they became really hostile. I don't think they really knew how to deal with it. You know, they'd come back with um, you know, things. Well, you know, I think somebody for me one time to say, you know, Christopher Hitchens said, you know, the only way that a Christian you can follow the Bible is is if you. Um, you know, if you interpret it as like a six literal day and it was in conflict with evolution and and I said, well, I don't consider Christopher Hitchens to be an expert on religion, but here's a PhD expert in biblical interpretation like John Walton, who's, you know, a, a professor of, of the topic. And he says, you know, evolution and Christianity are co- completely consistent with each other if you really understand the cultural context that the Bible was written in. And this would just infuriate them. It was actually funny to, in, in you know, many ways. So... The, the, uh, Bishop Robert Barron's a great guy on YouTube. He has a great, uh, a couple of great videos on the Book of Genesis and how silly it is to read it so literally. And he points to church fathers within Christianity going back, you know, to you know, the second and third century even, just which weren't doing literal interpretations of Genesis. Um, and, and the funny part is, is that I'm 50 years old. I grew up in the 70s. I was atheist for a long time, but I grew up Calvinist. And even in those days, um, you would start. That's when the creationist rumbles were happening. And you know, both the Presbyterians and my dad, who was a King James only fundamentalist, said that creation science sounded silly to them. And, you know, here we are, it's in 2017, and people get lectured about this all the time. Let me just get you down to it, though. Okay, I take it all, you have no no use for Ken Ham and the Kentucky Creation oh. the Museum and all that nonsense. Okay, I take that as writ, that you think that's <laughs> nonsense, which we all that's do, a, too, ab- here. Yeah, um, yeah ab- absolutely true. Just yeah, to go on that, I mean, I mean uh, you know, and here's the thing is, I mean, Ken Ham is not a scientist. In my understanding, he's a science teacher. 
Um, mm. You know, he has no background in science. Um, you know, and I think it's funny, like the, the you know him and Bill Nye debating. Neither one of them is a scientist, although you know Bill Nye did play one in, on a TV show. Um, <laughs> But you know, it, like I have, have, yeah, yeah, I'll have. I mean, I'll be honest. I have, I have zero patience for for uh, like Ken Ham and these kind of people. And, and you made you made a very good point, which was you know, young earth creationism. It was really about the 1950s, 1960s where that started going. I mean, it's probably the biggest point it's ever been right now. And it's really just an American phenomenon. And I would, you, I, would you know, I would even say it's a phenomenon because people have chosen to fight it. One of the things yeah. that I've seen over and over again is they create these creationist versus evolutionist debates, which most Christians aren't even interested in. They have it, but now, I mean, I've actually sat and listened to atheists debate the creation science people, and I'm like, the creation scientists are beating you, and you're, and they're idiots. I mean, I've seen that because it's like the create, it's like they can't even say the creationist has a good point on anything. Creationist just has to be wrong on everything, and it's like, why are you doing that? You're just making evolution look dumb. It's like a train wreck every time I see them do it. I guess I'm just expositing rather than asking a question, but actually, let's move to something a little more sophisticated. If you looked at, and I'm, I'm a doubter on this too, but I'm curious what you're going to say, Michael Bay and his intelligent design theory. Well, I mean that's another thing. I mean, yeah, 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 be he, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I mean, so intelligent design to me, that's a little different. Um, I mean, they are, you know, same way. I mean, they're against evolution in all forms or whatever, and and they you know, and you know, I, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't read too much on those guys. <laughs> but, yeah, okay. You know, I, 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 know, I know, I know, I don't like them. <laughs> I know. But I was hoping I, I you just, would agree. I was hoping you agree. They all seem to be a yeah. certain stripe of Christian. Yeah. And a certain well, very think, specific yeah. subset yeah. of Christian that's not even necessarily mainstream. So, well, it, it, and that's, I think it's just like a, to follow up on that. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, these the intelligent design, young earth creationists. I mean, these represent a very small fraction of what Christianity is. Um, I mean, worldwide. I mean, even like you know, atheists such as Eugenie Scott. I mean, you know, have acknowledged that the vast majority of Christian seminaries around the world, uh, even Protestant ones, are you know, you know, uh, accept a, a view that, you know, evolution and, and Christian faith are compatible, kind of a theistic evolution type of view. Um, same thing with the Catholic Church, which I know, I know you're a big proponent of that. I mean, they, they, I think, never wavered from that position. I mean, that, you know, pretty much, I'd say, like, yeah, the vast majority of Christians, you know, see no conflict between, between uh, evolution and, and Christian faith whatsoever. Yeah, so. the Catholic the Catholic Church's specific position is that they have no exact position, which is proper because they're not there to comment on on science. But they've they've said since the 40s, I think. And actually, I can tell you, Catholic schools were teaching evolution while the famous famous Scopes Monkey trial was going on because they thought it was some weird hang up the Protestants had. Not picking on Protestants, but I mean that's just the interesting history, right? They were already teaching yeah. the kids evolution when the Scopes Monkey thing was happening. Um, then, but do I take it then you, I mean, your ears did perk up. You said molecular biology. You said you started questioning. What was it in biology that made you start questioning your own atheist axioms? Well, you know, believe it or not, and this is, this is a pretty funny story. And, and, uh, you know, a lot of people know this one. Um, so, you know, I was, you know, when I was an atheist, I mean, I wouldn't say I was an overly committed atheist. You know, I wasn't militant by any means. You know, I just, you know, just accepted that view. I think I would have accepted, you know, at the time, I'd take myself as some kind of a Marxist, you know, not, you know, being a college student and, and all, you know, young, you know, liberal, you know, excited about, you know, everything, every ideology I could find. And I kind of liked that ideology. So it was kind of nice. Never really was too militant in it. I think the real question was just my approach to studying science. You know, I remember it was like you know asked by one of my my committee members to um, you know to, to look at a to to um, you know I guess I was having a you know what was called a comprehensive exam in your PhD is where it's sort of a, a big oral exam that lasts like several hours and they just grill you on everything. And I think someone you know I was studying virus um, virus replication and. And uh, this one committee member of mine says, well, what's the, um, you know, the vector for the Ebola virus? You know, a vector is just, a, you know, how is it, you know, propagated in nature? You know, how is it carried around? You right, know, airborne, said, animal transmission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's like, yeah, is it, yeah, is it found in mosquitoes? Is it found in, you know, whatever? You know, where, where, where is it stored in nature, basically, right? right? So, you know, so, uh, you know, um, and I said, well, you know, I'm thinking it's a monkey, you know. And she kind of looked at me and said, no, you're wrong. Um, 
you 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 know um we don't know what the vector for the Ebola virus this is that you know back in the 90s so we don't know what the vector for this virus is uh the reason you said monkey is because this movie came out called outbreak <laughs> and, um you know and and the in, in the movie the, the the virus was was propagated by a monkey it was a hollywood movie right it was great and i i and she's right you, you what you're doing is you're taking uh you know, pulp culture, pop culture, and you're you're mixing it with your science. You know, you're filling in the gaps. You should. The correct answer is you don't know what the, the vector is, and what you did is you you are um, you know you know taking these you know, your your you know your cultural understandings and pop culture, and you're filling in the gaps. That's a very unscientific approach. You want to be a scientist, you got to learn to get this out of your mind. You know, you need to challenge everything you believe in. You know, you got to question everything. You can't just you know, go on movies and books and you have to actually, you know, see what the actual data is and, you know, take a more, you know, humble approach to your question, you know, to answering your questions. I thought, oh, this is very good. So it kind of st- started me thinking about a lot of things. You know, maybe I should challenge everything I said. You know, I want to become a better scientist. And, you know, I started, you know, thinking about, I think I was also reading some article from Time Magazine or something like that around the same time, you know, about what does science tell us about God? I don't remember where I read it. And it's like, yeah, what do I know? How do, how do I know there's no God? What what exactly, you know, do I come this, up with this idea? And, you know, I'm thinking about it. Now, is there any evidence that shows atheism is true? And, I'm, you know, I start testing things. And, you know, after a while, <laughs> you know, I realized, you know, all my beliefs about atheism, it's simply just a, a, a position based on faith. There is no evidence that atheism is true. I have no idea. I mean, there could be a God, there could not be a God, but, you know, I you know, can't say for sure that atheism is right, you know. And, and you have this arrogant mentality, like, oh, I know I'm so much more advanced than these religious people, which, I, you know, I did kind of view them as kind of a primitive, kind of this is a... <laughs> You know, maybe, you know, just kind of an ancient thing. I thought, you know, I'm more enlightened, but am I really? I mean, why is that any more of a, any less of a faith than all these other religions out there? And that's what started me thinking. Then I started comparing all these religions and views. Well, what is the correct religion? And, you know, what is the correct point of view? And, you know, that pretty quickly led me, you know, then when I start looking at, um, atheist history and, you know, you know what, how atheists behave throughout history, especially, you know, looking through the things like the communist revolutions, uh, you know, French reign of terror, you know, Mussolini's fascist Italy, you know, things like this, you quickly realize, well, atheist is not a very nice religious view to adopt. <laughs> and that kind of, you know, led me away from atheism. Well, you know, that's interesting because what you're expressing there is something that we've noted on escaping atheism before. I mean, even, um, let's say you don't make the jump to Jesus or any particular religion. History seems to show, and quite a bit of the greatest historical thinkers, uh, I mean, whether you're talking about John Locke, the great liberal philosopher, Cicero, the great pagan Roman orator, uh, people like Thomas Jefferson, all said, you know, even though none of them were particularly religious, none of those people I just named were religious at all. All of them said you can't trust an atheist. Atheism's terrible, um, and and it, because it all seemed to get to something that, without a sense of something higher than yourself, something that you can't argue with because you're not in charge of it, um, the atheistic worldview just winds up being nihilist, empty, or kind of narcissistic and selfish because, or, or arbitrary because you have no objective standard outside yourself against which to make any judgment of anything. That's what I seem to have observed, and I don't know that anybody else has ever refuted that. Well, I think it was a good, a good, um, good line by a, a very, a very famous atheist. Well, he wasn't famous for being an atheist, but I'm trying to remember his exact words. Where he said, "Well, if there's no, no God to believe in." Actually, I think I'll if you give me, if you give me like ten seconds here, I could sure, probably look this ahead. up. But I thought this was a really good, a very good quote. And if you give me where did I put that? going through some of my files here, so I think it would be in, yeah, so go down here, and don't mind me talking, but it's a very good line, I want to get it exactly, because this was, I think, uh, out of every atheist I've ever heard, I thought this was the best, best line ever, and it was, was it something um, by Nietzsche? Sartre? No, no, no. Some, a little more recent than that, and I'm just scrolling down here. So hold on. All right. I know we might have to edit this out because it's taking me a few minutes. But <laughs> all right. Oh, that's all right. Go ahead. Yeah, Take yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Where is it? Oh. 
no, no, no. Oh, here he goes. Yeah. So the line was, if a person doesn't think there is a God to be account- accountable to, then what's the point of trying to modify your behavior to keep it within acceptable ranges? Now, that line was, was um, stated by an atheist named Jeffrey Dahmer, ah, who yeah. uh, was, was very, very famous. And, you know, he just basically, you know, he was an atheist. And he just lived, a, you know, he didn't care. You know, he just went, uh, if you look up some of the, the um, things he's done, he was actually a, kind of a cannibal. You know, he murdered people and, and things. Yeah. He was a pretty sick individual. And when he said that, and I think, you know, in Christian, you know, in uh, you know, prison, I think he eventually, you know, converted to Christianity or something like that, and then he was, you know, killed. But it's just, you know, that, 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 the, the irony of someone like that making a comment, you know, like that, I mean, it just, it tells you where atheism leads, you know? It's just, you know, there's no one to be accountable to but yourself, then, you know, where will it, where will it go in the end, you know? And I think that's a reason a lot of people actually become atheists. And, you know, like, as I mentioned, when I, when I, turned to atheist, you know, became an atheist, it was probably, I would say, late high school, um, you know, probably, you know, early college, and then right up into, into grad school. And I'm thinking, you know, what was it? When I, you know, it was, it was part of the reason why I was attracted to atheism was because, well, they're really, you know, this is, this is an, you know, a religious view that doesn't have rules. You know, I can, I can be as greedy as I want, selfish as I want, you know, I can take advantage of people. And hey, I'd be honest, I mean, it's all about girls, you know, when you're, when you're that age, you know, it's, I mean, look at the elevator gate, you know, the whole, you know, that's a big scandal that has rocked the atheist community, you know, this. I, this, I had uh, a front page view. I, I had, a, I, I, I saw that when it went down uh, elevator gate. I'll probably yeah. have to put a link in the interview to tell people what it was. Um, but as somebody who had left atheism only a few years before, I found it most enlightening. Um, even though I find atheists and atheism very predictable, when I say they're predictable, I say they tend to go off on multiple predictable directions, right? Like one of the things you'll, I see over and over again is 90% of them are either socialists of some flavor or some form of libertarian, right? Now you say that's two radically different philosophies, but what they all share in common was, you know, uh, 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 a, a redu- reduction to materialist economics and, um, you know, supposedly making a better world better through their ideology. Um, I, and I, I see that in other atheist stuff, right? They'll talk about having kids so they can reproduce their selfish genes. I've actually heard them talk like that. Um, there's a certain radical selfishness that just seems to come to it naturally whether you're inclined that way or not when i was an atheist it was something that i i recognized and fought right i i would tell myself because i was a pretty serious atheist for a long time like okay yeah it's tempting to become nihilistic but i better not do that you know now how i avoided it is another question eventually i gave up right but I, I find it telling that when I speak to atheists, they will deny in principle that they have any accountability for what other atheists do, um, even while they simultaneously will say they need greater representation in government because they're an oppressed minority. There's something very strange about it all as a cult, pop culture phenomenon that I've, I've never seen anything quite like it before. I mean, I literally saw, like, Bill Maher, a well-known atheist, before the election was talking to President Obama about how people like him who are atheist and not religious have no particular ideology, so they need special protection under law. And um, it's like people don't even see the disconnect in that. You don't exist as a definable group, but you need special protection anyway. And you don't have a specific ideology, even though there's 20 things you all believe, right? There's no God. There's no afterlife. Everything's doable by science. It's almost like when Daniel Dennett called religion a spell, he was talking about atheism because they really will not concede that there's anything ideological about their view. That's what I'm seeing with 99% of them. Yeah, um, well, that's – oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And, 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 well, yeah, I guess that's not really a question, is it? Um, it's just, Sorry, it's, I'm commenting again. Um, but I, I sense that you must have seen something similar. You guys have this freedom from atheism thing. Um, you know, I mean, at what point did you notice that atheism had gone from just sort of a, you know, I don't believe in God, I'm not interested in that stuff, to something that you, like, need to help people free themselves? Because you do. I mean, I get supportive notes from people who are afraid to tell me they like my work. Well, and it's I mean, like, wait a minute, you're afraid? I mean, th- this is the opposite of everything we're told about how atheists are supposedly, you know, 
um, treated poorly, but it's like, no, people are afraid to offend atheists. Everybody mm -hmm. seems to be afraid to offend them. Yeah. Well, I think your question was, well, when did I notice it? Because, I mean, the thing yeah. is, okay, when is it? Well, but, well, but I think a bigger question is, you know, is, I, I noticed that probably the more I looked into it, but I, I think the, the bigger question is, is well, when have they, did atheists have, how long have they been this way? And let's go back into history, because you've got to keep in mind, I mean, when we say, like, atheists in America, I mean, yes, they're a very small group, but, you know, how have they behaved around the world? And you've got to keep in mind, you know, I mean, they are certainly not a, an oppressed minority. I mean, they are definitely a minority, but they are by far the most oppressive group out there. Um, you know, take a look, you know, 50% of the world's atheists live in China, uh, where, you know, you have to be an atheist. Um, you know, if you want a government job, you ha you know, and you can just go look online and look this. I mean, they, you have to, you know, if you want to, if you want to be part of the, the ruling party, you have to state that you're an atheist. If you want a government job, you have to state you're an atheist. You have to deny any other religious belief. Um, yeah, you know, and if certain you, Christian you know, groups are banned yeah. under threat of execution yeah, and imprisonment. Well, it's not even. Anymore. Yeah, it's banned. I mean, they're thrown in in jail. I mean, you know, you know, you know, you know. I often hear this joke like, well, at least we don't go around knocking on people's doors trying to convert them. Oh, you ever go to China? Because they will knock on your door. They will arrest you. They'll drag you into jail. They'll, you know, you're in North Korea. You own a Bible. You get executed. I mean, let's talk about the Soviet Union. I mean, you know, I mean, I keep hearing this thing like, oh, Richard Dawkins coined the term militant atheist. No, he did not. Militant atheism has been around since the 1920s. It was an organization started by Joseph Stalin. The whole goal was to, you know, to basically combat religion and destroy it in all forms and while presenting a scientific mindset. Does that sound familiar to anyone? I mean, it you know, should. this is exact. It's exactly what you know these guys are doing today. It, they're, they are, you know, they, they call themselves the new atheists. But I like to say, well, the new atheists are the same as the old atheists. They've been around since the 1920s. They've been around since the the French Revolution, where they'd go around and they would, you know, you know, kill priests or there was a, there was a, there was a, there was an incident during the French Revolution where they they tore down a church, killed the priest. This is during the French Revolution. Put a naked woman on the altar and yelled. Um, Hail goddess of reason. Yeah. I mean, it's the same. yeah, they, like, yeah I mean, so they're all talking about reason and rationality all the time, and they're like, this has happened before, and not just with the communists. You yeah. mentioned the French well, Revolution. Um, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, oh, no, no, but, yeah, but you're exactly right. I mean, whether it be Karl Marx saying religion is the open of the people, or whether it's Dawkins saying it's like a virus, you know, or... or, or Christopher Hitchens saying it's, you know, religion is a poison. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You know, it's, it's not, this is not a new phenomenon at all. And I think, I think the biggest thing that you, you want to turn away from atheism, the biggest thing you can, the, the best thing you can do is start studying atheist history because these new atheists are not a new and enlightened group. I mean, they've been new and enlightened for like, you know, two centuries now, constantly, you know, you know, talking about being an oppressed minority and, you know, ushering in an era of global, a global utopia or, you know, religious free, free society. And, and as soon as they get into power, the first thing they do is take away everyone's rights, um, you know, forbid any expre religious expression in public, then start going around and, you know, banishing it into the churches, into the homes, and then start closing the the churches and invading the homes and arresting people. It's, it's the same pattern over and over again. Um, I think you would be very foolish to, to ignore that. And what I think is so unique about our, our page is that it is an international page. We do a fair amount of reach, uh, outreaching to people in other countries and things like this. And we do get a lot of people from like places like China or, you know, you know, Chinese communities huge on our page, um, you know, oh, yeah. from people from like India or whatever, you know, cause you have these, um, you know, Marxist groups, you know, terrorist organizations. We've seen just recently, you know, FARC, you know, the, you know, in Colombia, or you see the Shining Path in Peru, or you see, you know, the Marxist groups in Nepal. I mean, these are active terrorist organizations. I mean, these are the groups that really and they taught. they terrorize <laughs> churches. They terrorize churches. They're particularly well, fond they of doing everybody. that. And they yeah, terrorize well, I mean, everybody else, too. Yep. Well, you see, you, know, you see a lot of the modern Islamic groups that you see these terrorist groups. I mean, a lot of them just took the pages from from what they saw in in these um, you know these these Marxist terrorists, these atheist groups that were you know I mean even in the United States in the 20s and 30s you had these Bolshevik you know groups that were you were committing acts of terror blowing things up I mean until they were shut down I mean I think that's why you see so few atheists in America. 
today is simply because, you know, I mean, because of the, the Cold War stigma that was, atheism was so, you know, you know, associated with, with communism and Marxism that, you know, of course, there's a very low level of it in America. But I think if you look at the rest of the world, I mean, where, where Marxism wasn't banned, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's why atheism is on the decline worldwide, <laughs> is because people are getting rid of that. I mean, sure, you have the Americans say, well, we're a repressed minority. Well, I think the world has a reason to be afraid of atheists. And I think, you know, I think if people, you know, some of these atheists, you know, would actually talk about, you know, atheist history and, you know, and, and look at it and you know, be objective about it. I, I, you know, I don't think they would really see themselves as an oppressed minority, but as a, a minority that wants to oppress. It's interesting that you say that and that you're willing to say that. I've said the same out loud a number of times. And, of course, the atheist response, which is most disturbing, is just anger and dis- or, or, or condescending dismissal, which is one of the things I've said. That is still more reason to distrust you as an atheist. If we had organized atheists like, I don't know, Sam Harris or whatever, saying, you know what, there's this bad history associated with this word, and maybe we need to talk about it, and where does that come from? No, no, it's all just a playing victim that someone should note that this correlation exists. Objecting to the fact that you even notice there's a correlation. And well, I mean, like I said, yeah, I mean, I'm welcome to, you know, they want to go through history and bring me some stats. I mean, like I said, I've got a very scientific mind, you know, I mean, I read these things, so well, it's, I mean, it's it kind of funny. Interesting but, uh, atheism, yeah. atheism has, of course, always been around. We've got atheist philosophers going back to the ancient Greeks, but it became an organized militant thing. It seems to have come out of Marxism um, and some other groups, though. You, I'm going to ask you this one last thing, and then I'm going to ask you one more question, and then one or two more questions, and we're going to wrap it up. You mentioned one name. You've been mentioning Marxists and leftists all the time, but then you mentioned Mussolini. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I can give a name. This is another one that makes people angry. I've mentioned a number of times that Hitler was an atheist, because I'm sorry to say he was. It's been uh, popular to say, well, you can't really say because in his early days and blah, blah, blah. No, what we know for sure about Hitler was regardless of his Christian background or the Christian trappings, by the late 30s, early 40s, he had fired every single Christian in his government and was a very strong anti-Christian. No Christians left in his government while the worst of the Nazi regime was going on. Not a single one. His elite officer corps were also purged of all Christians. They had nothing but Satanists, occultists, and atheists running the German government during the last four or five years of World War II, which in my mind explains a lot. Um, And that's just a fact. But I hadn't heard about Mussolini. So tell me something about Mussolini. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the two things. I mean, I'll start with Hitler. I mean, personally, actually, I don't think Hitler was an atheist. I mean, I I definitely know he wasn't a Christian. He hated Christianity. I mean, there there is no question that he hated Christianity. He tried to destroy it. Um, Whether he was actually an atheist, I mean, that's that's to be said. I mean, he certainly There's, admired uh, philosophers like Nietzsche. He certainly staffed, you know, he had atheists around him. He certainly admired atheism. Whether he himself actually was, there's some evidence to say he may have been some kind of neo-pagan or was trying to create a new kind of he, thing. But that, he, that's he, still he, imagine he, of the, he was a crazy man who swung between yeah, occultism yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. there is no God. But yes. Yeah. In terms of, in terms of Mussolini, I mean, this is, you know, this is very basic knowledge. I mean, Mussolini was a very, very outspoken atheist. I mean, his goal was to destroy the Roman Catholic Church, um, you just go onto his Facebook, or not his Facebook page, you know, Wikipedia page, or any book, you know, any book, I mean, it, this is no, um, this is no secret. Oh, he was, he was, he was a no. Yeah, yeah, no, he was, he was no, and this, his whole point was to, um, to, to destroy, uh, you know, the Catholic Church, and the, in fact, one reason why the Vatican exists as a kind of a separate com- country is because he basically wanted to destroy it, you know, destroy it, and he said, well, we'll you know, he kind of cut a deal with him, say, well, let us have, at least have the Vatican, and you know, we won't really push back on the, the rest of Italy, you know, and you can have the rest, of, you know, it was, it was almost, you know, the, I mean, basically, you think about it, I mean, uh, you know, the Roman Catholic Church was really bullied and, you know, was scared to death of him. I mean, there was, no, I mean, I mean, yeah, there's, a real good, there, there's a real good book people should listen to yeah. or read sometime called yeah. The Myth of Hitler's Pope that goes yeah. into that. He, the, the, yeah. the whole Vatican was held hostage. They had troops yeah. outside a few times that, 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 when it looked like the Pope was going to get too mouthy. Um, people yeah. got shot. Um, yeah, no, Hitler yeah. wasn't. I hadn't known that about Mussolini, but I, I will oh, look yeah. into it because I'll believe it. Um, oh, yeah. because, because the whole uh, the whole thing that bothers us is the, the lack of accountability. Atheists will not admit that there's anything 
that comes out of deciding that you have no respect for religion and you know have no respect for religious values and you have no respect for the idea of God. That's an attitude that changes you. Um, yeah. And well, not that's to really but again, I'll go back to the pagan orator Cicero, who was no Christian, and he hated atheism so badly that he actually advocated burning their books and killing them if you had to. He thought they were that bad for society. And he wasn't any Christian, right? In fact, he probably would have supported killing Christians, but he really couldn't stand atheism. He said, never tolerate those people. They're insane, right? Um, but, and and that, 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 you know, that, that's interesting because that would sort of feed the atheist narrative that they've been victims throughout history, but I think it also goes, and atheists have been mistreated by religious people, but I think it also goes to, wait a minute, it's not just religious people who have a problem. When you look at, the, the, you know, philosophers like John Locke, who was no friend of religion, or Thomas Jefferson, who was no friend of religion, and they're saying, yeah, but there's a real problem with atheism. Um, maybe you would think the self-aware atheist would at least say, okay, hmm, where did I get that? Uh, you know, have I thought about that? You know, because I, I too, I've tried with atheists. You can't get them to give a, a coherent basis for morals, for ethics, for honor, for anything else. Um, yeah. Well, I think the thing you want to keep in mind with atheists, I mean, you, I, mean I, I hear this a lot on our pages, you know, they say, well, atheists will say, like, well, what you think, you know, we know, you know, you can't, you can't have morals if, if you're an atheist. And they say, well, that's actually not true at all. I mean, atheists can have morals, absolutely. The question is, is which moral code do they follow? There are so many moral codes. As an atheist, you, it's a buffet for you. You can pick whatever you want. One day you could be John, Jeffrey Dahmer, the next day you can adopt whatever. I mean, there is no continuity. You have no one to be accountable to. So, I mean, as an atheist, you, know, you can lie. There's, and you, 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 know, you often make the, the comments like, well, you know, there's no accountability in atheism. They, you know, they, they never fess up to it. But then again, you've got to think about where, where they're coming from. Why should they? They believe in a worldview where they themselves are all the only thing that's important. They, you know, whatever it, it takes for them to, 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 to save face, to, to look like they're... to save face, to look like they're... Um, um, you know, the smarter than they look are. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, look in their eyes. I mean, this is this is the the most important thing to them. So, the, the, so, the yeah. couple more questions. Freedom from Atheism Foundation. Is it really just a stalking horse, and you're going to turn everybody into uh, Jesus type Bible thumpers? It's purely about Christianity. I'm guessing oh, no, that's no, no. not the case. No, no. In fact, it's it's actually, believe it or not. I um, mean, yeah, I think it was originally founded. Um, by a, by a, but it was actually a, a Muslim page was one of the, it was like I said, a merging of a couple pages. One of them was actually a Muslim page. We actually have um, admins from a variety of faith positions. We have a Buddhist, we have a couple Christians, we have a Muslim, we have a Hindu. Um, so it, it is really just an, you know, it's really a, an interfaith group. And a lot of people, you know, see it that it, 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 it's, it's a primarily Christian group. But, it, but it's not. Um, it just happens to be we post a lot of stuff about Christianity because, you know, Atheists have a tendency to attack Christians more than any other faith. Of course, we post, you know, wherever an uh, atheist will attack someone, you know, we'll, we'll post it. We posted stuff about atheists, you know, attacking Buddhists or Muslims. It just happens to be that, like, you know, 90% of the time they're attacking Christians. Yeah, um, on escaping atheism, we're mostly Christian, but we're different types of Christians that aren't in communion yeah. with each other. And we just added our, our first pagan, so... I think it's neat to hear that you've got Muslims, Jews, Hindus, and others. I'm curious about the Buddhists especially. I'd, I'd love to talk to your Buddhist guy one day because I happen to know the Ch Chinese government for some time now has been promoting the idea that uh, Buddhism is an atheist religion. And so far as I can see, no, that's the state-approved form of Buddhism that came in with Mao. Um, when I talk to well, or you know well, look into the yeah, writings of more ancient Buddhists, no, they had a lot more spirituality than that. Well, yeah, I mean Buddhism, you know, it, you know, they do believe in the supernatural and you know higher beings and things like this. So it, you know, in, in that sense, you couldn't be an atheist. But you also need to keep in mind right now the big push in China is to make a you know a a government approved version of Christianity that all denies like the divinity of Christ and everything like that that they're really pushing as well. So I mean, their goal is really to take you know, to make a, a sort of a, a, a you know, a, a Maoist version of Christianity, just as they've done the same thing with, with Buddhism. I mean, that, that's their goal. They, they want a state-controlled religion, right? And yeah, they have no problems pushing that, that through. I mean, they've done it to, um, you know, they've gutted Buddhism 
and they have their form of it. And they're trying to do the same thing with Christianity there as well. You know, they're trying to do it to Taoism as well. I can tell you. Yeah, ex- exactly. So it's um, yeah. Well, I'm really glad to hear it because we take the same attitude on escaping atheism. Although we're mostly Christians, we're not all Christians. We've done it. We've defended the Buddhists. We've defended the Hindus. Um, because there's just something about atheism that's so malevolent and mind-closing, even toward the sciences. It's a breath of fresh air to, um, you know, meet other people who go, wow, yeah, I don't even know if we have the same religion, but man, am I tired of the atheism thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and you can just say it out loud, yeah. you know, atheism is optional. No, I'm not an atheist. Can you, Really, uh, it's okay, right? It's okay yeah. not well, you got to keep mind, you, yeah. Even even in science, um, you got to keep in mind is like most scientists. I mean, you you, you want to you know I'm a biologist, and you want you want to get a biologist to roll his not eyes. You start you you start talking about Richard Dawkins. I mean, the vast majority of scientists, you know, I know there's this 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 you know, you know thread in the atheist community that you know sci- you know atheism and science is is almost equal, but it, it's not the case at all. In fact, if you look at the number of scientists, the vast majority well I don't know if the vast majority, but the majority of of scientists. Um, you know, actually believe in God or a higher power. Only 17% identify as atheists, and even in the you know scientific community, you do you know you get a few outspoken people, but you know by and large, most of them kind of look at people like you know Lawrence Krauss or Richard Dawkins and these guys, and you know just kind of roll their eyes and think, oh, you know these guys are doing more harm to science than <laughs> than Ken Ham ever will. You know? They are doing they are, they, and they are yeah, they are you know, and so you know, like I said, a lot of a lot of, there's a huge like I said, the majority of scientists are not atheists and uh you know a lot of you know they're outspoken and, and the trouble is you get these these fringe ones these you know pop science people like like richard dawkins who you know, hasn't published a scientific paper in 30 years um you know he's you know he's go around speaking on behalf of of of, of uh religion or on behalf of science and you know and, and most scientists you know think he's annoying he's just like he's taking his philosophical views and extrapolating you know them well beyond any what any scientific data you know can support and, and it really is a, a a religious view that he's proposing all right so, so. you're talking about one of my favorite characters because i have a particular love for science and it's one of the reasons uh there's some of these atheists bug me the most because uh, they're talking science, they're, uh, like they're representing in science, and they're not. So you're a molecular biologist, and you've already said you're definitely not a creation scientist, and you don't even find Michael Behe and the intelligent design crowd interesting, um, which we're in agreement on. Um, mm-hmm. The interesting question then is, have you read The Selfish Gene? Um, oh, yeah, I have. By, yeah, I read it back in... And uh, back in I have tried mm-hmm. to tell people who won't believe me, but I've tried to tell people, if you know genetics, that, that, that selfish gene theory isn't even wrong, that it's just pretty much gobbledygook. Well, I mean, what he's doing is he's trying to anthropomorphize um, um, science, you know, genes and, you know, as, you know and it, it's kind of a neat model to look at, but I mean, it's not a scientific model, it's a philosophical model, right? I mean, you know, I can understand, you know, well, there's some truth to what he's saying, but I mean, he... he you know, it has no scientific honest, it's been, usefulness. It has no scientific well, usefulness. No, yeah, I wouldn't say. I mean, it's a neat approach to things. It, it, it's, it's, you know, it's pop science. You know, it's some interesting stuff that kind of, you know, it's a philosophical view. I mean, it, you know, it, it's, it's kind of fun. But yeah, it, I mean, there, there aren't people going around. There is no selfish gene theory that people are actually studying. You know what I mean? Right, it's, right, right. It doesn't you know, do it, anything. It, it goes you know, nowhere. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, like, okay, that's an interesting way of looking at it. And I, you know, I think there is some, you know, like, you know, you know kind of change your view on genetics a little bit. Yeah, okay, you know, I can see it from a certain point of view, but it, it's, not a, it's not a scientific theory. You know, it, it, it's him trying to philosophize through science. And, and while it's neat, it's not, like I said, it's not real science. That's what it, I, it, good yeah. enough. Well, James, thank you very much. I want to remember, check out the Freedom from Atheism page. Uh, on Facebook. They also have a Twitter. Um, the main goal there is not to convert you to anything. The The goal is to free your mind to think spiritual and metaphysical thoughts without fear. Would that be a fair way of putting it? Yeah, well, I think it's just a place where if you're uh, you know, a victim of militant atheism, just uh, it's a place for you to share your experiences without being harassed. All right. Awesome. Well, we'll get this interview posted in the next day or two. We'll send it to the guys at Freedom From Atheism. Maybe they'll post it on their group. Uh, James, thanks a whole lot, okay? Oh, well, thank you for... Uh...